Hey guys, there's a bunch of new Two Bears YMH stuff in the store. It's our summer line. It's available right now. Go to store.ymhstudios.com and scoop something up. Let's get me on some gear, dude. Let's get me some Winstrol, Deca. Oh, you're not already on some shit? No, nah, man. When I came in today, you had a kind of a chest pump going. Fucking, look at that shit, dude. Maybe you did some push-ups before I got no in No joke. Here. Look at this shit. 100%. <laughs> Hey guys, it's official. Bert is HIV positive. <laughs> also, what? I'm really excited <laughs> to. So tell he immediately you, can't make it in? He's done. Uh, I'm excited to tell you that today you're watching a podcast with one of the strongest men that has ever walked the planet. And also, I have a guest named Mark Bell here. Um, Mark? Thanks for coming. I appreciate uh, it. Thank you. I have we have we have befriended one another. I was doing a show in Sacramento. Befriended sounds like it we're turning into enemies. I think it does it. It sounds it doesn't sound okay. good. Okay, sounds like someone turned on somebody else. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> I will visit my thesaurus later. <laughs> but my new friend Mark is here and uh, it was great. I was doing sac. You know, I'm very I'm very blessed in many ways, but. One of the things that happens a lot of times when I travel, people reach out. Sometimes it's like, you know, those people in like sports teams will be like, you can come check mm. out the facility or there's like someone's coming to the game or coming to the show. I mean, and and then you were like, hey, if you want to come work out um, on this day of your show, you can come. We got into Sacramento late that day and we had a show. We had, I think we had two shows that night. And so I was like, I, I can't make it to the gym, but, you know, I'll see you at the show. And you come to the show and we're talking afterwards and you're like, so what's like your schedule? I'm like, well, we're going to go in the night and then tomorrow we're going to leave. And I, I just happened to tell you, I'm like, I think we're leaving like at one. And you go, oh, so your morning's free. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And you're like, well, I mean, why don't you come work out in the morning? And I was like, all right, motherfucker. <laughs> so, and actually. Pulled those excuses yeah, away Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, <laughs> then he's like, then he's like. Just come check out the gym. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I go check out his gym, and he's like, hey, see these fucking plates? Put them on that sled and uh, wrap this around your waist. Let's do laps. So I end up, I end up having, actually, you, you don't even know. You don't know how much I enjoyed that experience with you. It has been... Because we've been, I don't know why, but that just clicked, didn't it? It like worked really well. Like the workout was good, but I think you and I clicked on like a little bit different level. We did, but well, also I was putting you through something kind of hard, and I saw, yeah. like, I don't know if, how much people know about like being a high level stand up comedian, like what it takes. But I saw in that workout kind of what it takes because I could see in your eyes that you were driven to do what we were doing. It wasn't like the craziest workout ever, right? But it was wasn't easy. It right. was difficult, and I could see that you wanted to push more and more into it. I was like, "Oh, it's obvious he has this in other disciplines in his life." Thanks. I mean, I I felt that too, and I and I I left that place because, you know, you gave me a you gave me a great workout. I also I had always heard about the slingshot, mm -hmm. which is like an invention of yours right. that people put on their basically on their arms and and they do bench presses or push ups yep. and. Um, uh, it's probably yeah it is yeah, probably bench the best. press push ups dips yep. um but like it's this you know almost like a, a compression band that gives you like an assist the way that the way that you and I've always seen these and I've seen them in gyms I'd never had one or bought one and obviously they're all over your gym so we got to work out with those which was awesome but I left there super like super motivated man super inspired and I think I've only I think it's only been like a month something like that and I have been, we've been on the road, you know, because you met Sean Nix, who I, I, I brought with me that yep. day. I brought Mark. Sean and I have been working out on average two days, two times a day. That's awesome. Every time we've been lifting in the mornings and doing cardio in the afternoon, almost every day. And we've, you know, been really on top of our diet and like, like really focused. And I also realized something that from talking to you that day, because there's a lot to talk about. But so I realized that as the guy who's on tour that's kind of like, uh, I, you know, I'm in charge and I, and I have a crew mm. that what I say I want to do will set a tone. 
Absolutely. And so like, as soon as, you know what I mean? Like if I go, I realized I was like, I left you like long message, a bunch of long messages. Oh, you did, man. <laughs> but like, I, I actually realized it too, that like, if I go, uh, no, nah, I don't want anything to drink. Like I'm mixing randomly, right? Everyone will be like, no, we're good. It sets the tone for the whole table. And then table. if I go, I want, I want a, a, an old fashioned or something, then everyone's like, I'll take an old fashioned. And, and it's like, it, it hit me that that happens with like, I focusing on lean protein. I've been doing that since I saw you. So like, I'm down like nine pounds. What? Yeah. So that's that, awesome. And, and I've just been like really into that's these workouts great. and I've been, and I, and I credit you with like, with, with like setting that, that tone and that motivation. But I, I want to talk about so much. Um, but I also, one of the things that we talked about was sleep, right? And I always thought about sleep as something that happened to me, meaning mm. like you wake up, how was your sleep? You go, it was good. It was shitty. It just happens. <laughs> and talking to you, I realized, no, like I should have some accountability for my sleep. In other words, that can still happen, but it should be like, I'm putting my effort into making it good. Not just like, yeah, dude, it just sucks. You know, like you are in charge of getting ready to go to sleep. Right. You can't just be like, sleep just sucks. <laughs> you know, like you well, have to put you think, about, you think about like with your children, you know, you give them certain, a bedtime, you give them a curfew. Not my, not my two little fuckheads. <laughs> They're always, yeah, but yeah, that's true. They're yeah. up until midnight, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, but we don't do a lot of that stuff to ourselves. And right. we, we know that that's in our best interest, but we just, we don't, we want to push it off. Uh, it's really easy to talk yourself out of doing things that are good for you uh, in place of doing things that are like entertaining or loungy or comfortable. Like I'm just going to sit here and chill with my wife and watch one more show. Yeah. But the one more show doesn't do anything for you or for your wife, really. It, yeah. The best thing to do would be to just like brush your teeth and go to bed. Right. But it seems like a boring lifestyle sometimes. But sure. You know, I, I think that we can find balance. If you watched one show and you spent, you know, 40 minutes or an hour watching a show, that's probably good. And then you should be able to go to bed and say, I want to be able to do that same thing tomorrow. I want to be able to exercise. I want to be able to spend time with my family. I want to be able to write or uh, work on a podcast or whatever the things are that you're doing during the day and have that uh, good balance Yeah, and feel really good about that. But it's hard to have balance if you're not sleeping. Uh, you're throwing a bunch of bricks, you know, 10 pound bricks in a backpack every time that you start to miss sleep. And so every decision that you make every day is just that much harder. And then it's linked to Alzheimer's and dementia and like all yeah. kinds of crazy shit. And they are estimating by about 2030, about that half the population will have Alzheimer's or dementia. So it's like, let's try to, <laughs> I, I, how do we mitigate some of that? You know, what, one of the funny things about hanging out with someone like you though, that has like what I would call a specific knowledge, a special specialized knowledge, right? In body, fitness, and these things, is that it is becomes it does become contagious. You talk about some some of those things, and right. then the people you tell start telling other people. Like I, I have been telling people because I got the tape, right, right over yeah, the right mouth now. tape. <laughs> the mouth tape. People are like, "The fuck are you talking about?" Not good if you're throwing up in your sleep. Apparently, yeah, it's definitely not good. <laughs> but tell, will you like give some? I know there's like, I know I saw this post that and Seema posted about, Hey, go check out these podcasts with these, like, I think doctors that like mm -hmm. really explain it, but like why we, why you do this. It's just supposed to be more efficient to breathe in and out of your nose. So this uh, is like, and the, for people, it's not, it's a gentle tape, yeah but it does keep like your lips together. If it keeps your lips together. If you wanted to pop it off, you just simply open your mouth yeah. and it, the tape is off. There's many different types of tape that you can get. Um, the way that I look at some of this stuff is like, why not try it? Like I'm not a, like, it might seem like a dangerous endeavor to yeah. tape your mouth shut. It sounds crazy. When we first mentioned it to you, you were like, what the fuck? And well, I just thought it was some real fucking like juice head shit where they're yeah. like, are you taping your mouth shut? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And, like, and I thought you guys were just like ripping duct tape and like shove it over your mouth, right. you know? And like, do you fucking, do you gargle with formaldehyde? And like, nah, like, what are you talking about? I thought yeah. you guys were just crazy. But then... When you explained it and I looked it up, I was like, oh, and then the thing that almost made the most sense to me was like, somebody says like, if you're, if you are in a general sense of panic, you are told to go mm -hmm. into your nose and right. that's like a calming thing. And then as somebody who, like I have, I sleep with a mouth guard mm. and the point of the mouth guard is that yes, it prevents the grinding, but it also, it has these bands. It keeps your lower jaw 
uh, forward, forward from from dropping, right? It puts your tongue to the roof of your mouth, kind of, right? Right. And then that lower jaw going like this, you know, keeps, like I said, from dropping, and it prevents some snoring, yeah. too. But that tape on top of it actually does force the nasal breathing. Well, actually, I felt mm -hmm. more rested the first time I did it. I felt more rested. You'll get more out of less sleep, just put yeah. it very simply. Now, if you have, like, sleep apnea or something or have other conditions, then... Yeah. Um, you might be shit out of luck, but even people that have sleep apnea that use the nasal, uh, passages, they can use the mouth tape effectively under their, uh, their device. Right. Yeah. And there's also like with, you know, on the note of sleep apnea, sleeping with your mouth open and breathing in and out of your mouth is just, it's not super, uh, it's just not great for your body. You know, you're, 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 you're gasping for air. And when people have sleep apnea, they actually are stopping breathing at times. And I heard some of the stuff that Bert was talking about on the show and it like, it had me concerned in a way. Cause I was like, man, like, Oh I really? He said something that concerned you. <laughs> yeah. There are a number of things that he says that does that to people right now. He's on a, so Bert is a, your typical, um, I guess your, your binge and, Purger mm. type. So what he does is he's on the road. He's a fucking psycho. You know, he he goes out every night. He drinks. He eats like a fucking lunatic. I don't know how much sleep he gets. He's up the next day. He's running while he's drinking. And then he <laughs> goes on the a raft down a ravine and grabs a fish with his hand. And then, you know, he's just a fucking maniac. Then he gets real unhealthy. Everybody's like, Jesus Christ, you're so fat, I thought you were Asian. And then he's like, I got to get my shit together. And he gets on these like health kicks for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, everybody that knows him and loves him just wants it to be, you know, a, a different baseline for him. Like he's not going to be, you know. A lifestyle of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Keep so it in like, there a little bit. Like, it's almost like you said, when we we're talking about food, you're like part of, of like, even if you're a healthy eater, and like you eat pro you're gonna like part of that is still enjoying like a donut or a yes. cheeseburger or whatever you like. I think everybody that knows and loves Bert wants to go like, yeah, dude, you can still indulge in some of these things sometimes, mm -hmm. right? But he's trying to like peel it back. And honestly, this is like you know I talk a lot. My Bert's my best buddy. I love him. Talk a lot of shit. The dude is an active guy. He's an a he's an athletic guy. For a guy his size, he can move. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he'll, he really will go run four miles. He'll work out with a trainer and like right. lift. And like he, he's an active person. He doesn't, have, he doesn't live a sedentary uh, lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. He's not a guy sitting on a couch. He is at, in a caloric surplus <laughs> every day. <laughs> and um, <laughs> So we, he should be fatter than he is. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Because he said he was like 260 or something. I'm yeah, like, that's 260. not even that fat. No. I he, used to be 330. It's crazy. He should be about 455. But <laughs> he, um, if you, like, yeah, he has, it's, it's just He's like. He's got a belly, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, it, but it's like, that's called visceral fat, right? So it's just, it's just like booze and fucking ribeyes. And. His stories are so crazy because he was talking about like, you know, throwing up in his sleep. And then he was like, I, got, I went to the doctor and I got some things checked out and they checked this, they checked that. And they, they said that I was fine. Yeah. They said I was pretty healthy. And I was like, that's the end of the story. That's I'm the like, end of the story. This is the beginning of the story. Dude, he goes, <laughs> he went, he saw a cardiologist. I'm who, fine. Who he was, was like, like what? and then she called me and she was like, I don't know how you did it, but go have a drink. I'm like, what kind of fucking <laughs> cardiologist tells you that? So, but here's the thing. As somebody, I know he's not here right now, but if you know, athletic, honestly, active guy who just really is, he is, he'll tell you, he's like, he's like, I'm impulsive, like a child mm. and in love, it just indulges. I mean, it feels like the, the obvious is just to go like, you just got to pull that back, but there, there's got to be another way of getting that message across, right? Like how does somebody like him like you know restrict some yeah for me it starts with like pulling excuses away from people and sometimes with people like that i can just tell them hey be less fat <clears throat> figure out a way <laughs> figure out a way to just be less fat and you know what that means do you know what you just did <laughs> every comment on his instagram <laughs> is just gonna say be less fat yeah for, be less fat i hope for, so I hope he steals. I hope he makes a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> I hope he starts a business and starts a podcast off. Of oh, him. man. 
But honestly, if you think if you think of things in reverse, because I'm dyslexic and have been told that I'm not very smart since the time I was in school. And so I've always kind of looked at stuff in reverse. And it's been really helpful to me to like unpack things with health. So to pull excuses away from people, can you go for a walk every day? You should be able to figure out how to go for a walk every day. 10 yeah. minute walk, one 10 minute walk. Yes. Get some sunlight, get some sleep. Those are the baseline starting positions. I've now, been sharing this by the way with people. Good. Yeah. The, the sun <clears throat> is a remarkable thing and we can go down these like giant rabbit holes, but they just, they, they lead you to uh, starting to examine stuff that's just like way too out there. When you start to talk about uh, mouth tape, well, then you have to start to talk about how we don't eat things that are hard. We don't chew things that are hard. And that's why our passages aren't as wide and as open as they should be. And that's why we have to forcefully tape our mouth shut. Normally, we should have access to be able to breathe in and out of our nose, but through evolution and through time of eating processed foods and eating things that are soft, you can kind of see how it starts to get a little tin hat and you're just like, fuck man, you lost me. I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just like, Hey, just tape your mouth shut. When it comes to things like walking, when it comes to things like sunlight, they just have a profound effect on the metabolism. Getting sunlight is one of the best things that you can do. And if, if you know some people that are staying inside very often. I mean, people get depressed. They get seasonal depression. Absolutely. That is a real it's thing. It's a real thing. There's not a ton of information about the sun and your metabolism and how you metabolize carbohydrates and stuff, but there's more and more information coming out about it all the time. And we know that the sunlight helps per, to provide your body with vitamin D. We know how important that is to your immune system. So there's many, many things that are going on when we get sunlight. So I just try to keep it simple for people. Get outside, hit up a walk. So with someone like Bert, walk, get yourself outside, sleep. If we can figure that out, then we can start to talk about foods. See, I think he already does the almost like the simple activity part of that. I bet you without knowing for sure, but I bet you his sleep is garbage mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, Bert, somebody, this is when you know somebody parties too much is um, if you're like, well, how do you feel today with like this change that you made? And he'll be like, what do you mean? And you're like, I mean, you know, we, we ate this today. He's like, well, I always feel pretty bad. So I don't know when something yeah. is affecting me. Like he always he, feels bad. Yeah. He doesn't know. Like he can't be like, oh yeah, I feel a I think a simple. He's like, I always feel sick. A simple rule for him or for just about anybody else is like, be as fat as you want until it negatively impacts other stuff. When you run a business, time seems more precious. Every misplaced moment feels like a missed opportunity, a lost chance to make your business better, or even just to step away and recharge. ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers like you more time to do what they really love. Unless what you really love is managing every single little detail of order fulfillment. ShipStation automates time-intensive shipping processes so you can get back to focusing on bigger things like developing new products, honing your marketing strategy, or interacting with customers. We've used ShipStation for a long time because that interface is so easy to use and manage to see what orders have come in, what has gone out, which carriers are taking them. All those manual tasks eating up time, ShipStation is really good at those. So let ShipStation handle all your shipping and handling and get back to what you're good at, growing your business. It's time to let go of all those shipping tasks. ShipStation can do it better and faster. Sign up for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com slash cave and start saving time on every shipment. That's two whole months of shipping made quick and painless, and it's free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com slash cave. ShipStation, make ship happen. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of podcasting and Three Dogs Night. I've Never Been to Spain is one of my favorite songs, and it's a song that's super rich and deep. You need great earbuds when you listen to them. That's why I use Raycon's Everyday Earbuds. They look, they feel, and they sound better than ever. With the optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable, they will not budge. Trust me, I passed out with them the other night. And with eight hours of playtime and 32-hour life battery, you can sleep with them all night long and just keep them in your ears. And they're so affordable. I, I normally have a pair on my, on my treadmill, a pair by my bed, and a pair in my backpack. Well, I can double up. I have two pairs on my treadmill, so they're always charged. Two pairs in my backpack and two pairs by my bed. They are customizable, noise isolation, awareness mode, so you can use them in New York if you're walking around. Go to buyraycon.com slash bears today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash bears to score 15% off buyraycon.com slash bears. Yeah. If it starts to negatively impact your sleep, well, now you're really in trouble. 
Because right. impacting your sleep is going to negatively, even just like one night of bad sleep has been shown to have people have readings that show that they're pre-diabetic. Just one bad night of sleep, just for that day. So it, it's, a, it's crazy how accumulative How much it sleep must do be. you get at night? I've been working on it a lot. I've been like just blocking off uh, nine to 10 hours every day to just try to make sure that I can actually sleep fulfill is- some of that. Like I went to bed last night at like 1230. We went to Soto Sushi and had some drinks, had a good time, ate whatever I wanted. It was awesome. Uh, but trying to get to bed after eating that much food, it yeah. just wasn't happening. So I got to bed a little bit later, but I just woke up later. So I'm trying to really adjust to it. And I can see how if someone that has like a, a nine to five or even like a somebody works really early in the morning, how difficult that could be. Or some of these people have swing shifts and stuff like that. Or for yourself, getting getting home uh, from a show yeah. at 12 or two or whatever the hell time it is after you eat and celebrate and do whatever else it is that you do. Yeah, it, it is. It's definitely a challenge. And that's the thing is I think I empathize a lot with with any other person in my field because I, I realize what they go through. One of the things I also remember that you said, we were there and we were talking about the fact that I, like, you know, a lot of people don't even know how to work, work out. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like I meet people where like, I've been in hotel gyms yeah, and you see it where you go, you see somebody and they're like touching like the dumbbell or the machine and they're like, and you're like, um, do you know what to do with that? <laughs> and they're like, no, like, right. So people, some people don't know. Right. But you brought this up when we were at your place, which is that, uh, some people you're like, man, they're not even lazy or shitty. They're just like, they're in pain. Like they don't even, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they don't want to try doing the thing cause everything hurts on them, which I think is a very like sympathetic way to look at people out there's not just be like, oh, you're a fucking loser. You sit on your couch. Like right. some people just don't, they're, they're in a painful place um, and they need help or encouragement or like somebody that can like gently get them into being active. You need to almost take people's hand and say, it's going to be okay. You can do this. Yeah. Most people can run. Most people would say, oh, I can't do that. If they saw you running, they would say, I can't do that. But if they just go really, really slow and take their time, and only run for 10 feet at a time. Like they I'm sure they can figure it out. Um, my own mother, you know, she, she died about four years ago and she was very heavy most of her life. She was also abused mentally. She was abused sexually okay. uh, from, from the time of being like a young child. So there are, there's a lot of uh, emotional pain that people are walking around with. Absolutely. She, my mother was so amazing and incredible though at instilling confidence in me and my brothers to the point where we're kind of blindly confident for Mm -hmm. some stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But my mom wasn't confident in herself enough to take steps to do certain things, even something simple like going for a walk. The last couple of years of her life, she was on a walker and, you know, I got to see that firsthand. And so I, I, that's why I'm so passionate about this stuff. I want to help people. I want to help the people that are, that are really stuck. They're stuck in their own mind. I believe you on their thoughts. They're in a lot of pain. And I, uh, I empathize with that, but at the same time, I also really think that just about anyone can can take that first step. But it does take a lot of courage. It does take courage, and you, and because uh, I've talked to, you know, I've had my own struggles, and then I've talked to so many people that have, where you you do realize that nobody can do it for you, right? Like right. we all have had friends or somebody who you're like, the fuck's going on, man. And you, you just realize that, like, I, I can't make you eat well. I can't. Right. Like, I can't. I mean, I remember with my dad, I was like, this is well before he got sick with cancer and everything. Like, he had a stint one time. Like, he was mm. overweight. And he goes and he gets a fucking in the emergency room. And they're like, oh, yeah, he had like 98% blockage. And I was like, oh, this is a wake-up call, right? And he's like, ah, yeah, you know, I got the stint. And like a week later, I'm like, where are you right now? I'm on the phone with him. He's like, I'm at McDonald's. I'm like, You're, you eat McDonald's still? And he's like, fucking Egg McMuffin. The I'm stint like, will handle it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, like, didn't that scare you? That he's like, well, it opened me up. The stint's wide open now. I'm like, oh, yeah. They Let's, say that people need to die nearly three times to like, in order to be, in order to comply. Well, he's done. So I don't think he's coming back. Right. He died. He died for <laughs> right. sure. But he doesn't have any chance. Yeah. There's no more chances for dad. But, uh, well, that's what can happen. You know, you can get hit. You can get hit by something hard enough that you can't come back from it. Yeah. 
it's a tough conversation. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that are probably like Bert that are, that are in that position of like, he probably used to be really athletic. He probably yes. used to participate in a lot of sports. He did. And then when he graduated high school, there at some point he probably gained 20, 30, 40 pounds. 40, 80, 100. Yeah. <laughs> and then he never uh, never was able to lose it. And then now you're kind of stuck there. The problem, Also, Bert is like, the. here's the thing. And this is a personality type. Bert is the good time guy. Right. Bert wants every moment to be the best moment. Right. So like if we broke right now and there was like, like you want to go have lunch? He'd be like, so he doesn't know. Let's have... go have the greatest lunch of our lives. Right. And you're like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> He's like, let's fucking, let's get like tequila shots. Let's right. have him bring champagne. I heard there's this place where that's they'll sick. set the fucking cake on fire. And you're like for lunch. And he's like, yeah. why not? Like that's his, you know what I mean? And, he, right. and then you leave going like, that's the fucking greatest lunch I've ever had. <laughs> that's Bert 24 seven. He's just wired like that. It's amazing. And then guys like that don't have a lack of, uh, you know, friends, right? Cause no, they, everybody they, loves to be every, around yeah, Bert. Everybody yeah. loves him. He's high energy. Yeah, yeah. And so you don't really see the effects of it. And then if he gets some blood work done and the blood work is okay, yeah, then he's, then like, he's like, I'm fine. Yeah, but yeah. as we get older, you know, unfortunately, like you lose muscle, you start to lose testosterone, uh, your growth hormone levels go down. And then it just gets a harder and harder to lose weight. So the simple stuff that we're talking about now, where you can just go outside, go for a walk, handle some of the activity side of things and just clean up some of your diet. Cause you yeah. have to clean up some of your diet. Uh, that won't be available as you get older and older. It'll be more and more difficult to be able to rewind the hands of time, the heavier that you get and not even just the heavier that you get, but the more body fat that you accumulate with less muscle mass yes. makes it more and more difficult. To the people, let's, let's say Bert out of this conversation, but the people that are like, you know, maybe they're, they're watching this right now on YouTube and they're just like, I'm overweight. You know, I'm, they're, they're 50, 100 pounds overweight mm. or whatever, right? I, I do think that like that best place, pers my point of view is like that best place to start is doing that simple walk, right? Yep. Like, cause like that is, that's getting your body moving again and doing a real evaluate. Like you have to have an honest evaluation about what are you consuming? Because you can get into these like cycles of like just eating shit Absolutely. all day. Not, not everything's processed or like you're opening a bag, you know, right. right? Or then like fucking, I mean, you meet people, they're like, I drink, fucking three liters of soda a day and shit like that mm. where you're like bro you you gotta fucking but making little changes like being like you know what i'll give you your one liter to start now right you eliminate those other ones and you start moving it can be the thing that because i feel like fitness things especially if you're starting from out of shape it's all based on momentum like you get momentum and then you just don't want to slow down there's some things that are really interesting like <clears throat> for some people the challenge has to be more and for some people, the challenge needs to be less. So for some people, you can say, hey, cut back on the 17 sodas that you have a day and see if you can have just like two or three. Yeah. For some people, that works. But for some other people, they need stuff to be really black and white. Like if you were told you have uh, until Friday to study for an exam and it's Monday, for some reason, you're going to wait till Thursday night. Yeah. Like we want to pressure ourselves. We want to paint some ourselves. Some people are just like that. We want to paint ourselves in a corner a lot of times. I'm, I can be like that. I can be a big procrastinator. So uh, you have to kind of like a little bit know who you are. But the real simple things of nutrition, one of the simplest things anyone can do is just eat more protein. The average American consumes approximately like 12%, 13% protein. If that percentage was just brought up, uh, that would mean that we'd be consuming less energy from carbohydrates and fats. Carbohydrates and fats are the main energy source for humans. Protein is like an, sort of like an inefficient form of energy for us. It's not our main source. So protein is almost free. It's not really a free calorie, but it's, <laughs> it can be kind of viewed as a free calorie in some way. Yeah. So if people just eat more protein, and if they're protein-minded and they focus on protein, protein also is the most satiating, so it will keep you full for longer. The problem is it's not always the most satisfying. Right. The carbs and fat together, that's the combo. That's the combo that you're looking for. But if you think about that's it. That's the pasta with yeah, butter and absolutely. sauce. And you're like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. pizza, ice cream. Yeah. Like the list goes on and on and it's fucking incredible. The, uh, the problem is, is that overrides your body's ability to know when it's full. 
and you want to just continue to eat it because it tastes so damn good. So carbohydrates and fats, interestingly enough, are also not found in nature anywhere except for in milk. And what does milk, you know, what does mother's milk do? It gets yeah. us big. Yeah. Makes yeah. us, makes us large, makes us grow fast. And you're not, I mean, obviously you're, you're a gifted guy physically, but you have been through, you're not just talking, you've been, I, there's, there's this photo you posted the other day, <laughs> yeah. but you're like three, how much are I you look in this handsome thing? as fuck. Yeah, you look super handsome, but aren't you like. Oh yeah. Look at how that much double you chin. There. I'm well over three bills right there. Yep. But, you, so, but you're also a power lifter here, right? Yep. So you're a real strong guy lifting a lot of weight, squatting over a thousand pounds, benching over 800 pounds. Fuck. <laughs> uh, Weighing 330. So I was a fat fuck, but I was not just a fat fuck. Right. I was fat and strong and it was kind of for a reason, but. And are you eating like anything and everything? Eating a lot. Yeah. Eating. Um, I would eat what I would consider to be fairly healthy kind of during the day. And then at night I would just kind of eat whatever i wanted i'd have second third dinner type we got thing. you uh we got you on a bench i think one of your your bench presses mm. from here i don't know if you will immediately recall which one this is but we um showing a clip from back in the clip. dizzy yeah this is uh how much is this here probably this is oh, probably oh yeah oh, 575. only 575 okay oh that looks pretty easy that did look pretty easy damn unfortunately i tore my pack with 600 pounds that was the goal is I was trying to bench 600 and this is without a bench shirt. So I also, I competed, uh, you know, I've been competing since I was 12. I'm 45 now. Yeah. And when I was competing, when I was younger, people wore like bench shirts and squat suits and yeah. stuff. So that's the 1080 squat that I did. The 854 bench I did. Those were in, that was in powerlifting gear, yeah. which is supportive. And then later on the sport switched and people, <sighs> people took off their uh, powerlifting gear and lifted raw and I did a 578 bench in a competition and went for a 600 and tore my pec. I tore my pec three times and that's how I ended up coming up with the invention. Oh, right, with the slingshot. And idea of the slingshot, yeah. Um, cool, I remember when I benched 600 too. Um, <laughs> I wanna ask you this about, about crazy lifting though, because you know, like when you go to gyms, you see, you, everyone knows like that guy, like that dude benches like 400 pounds. You know, everyone knows that guy kind of stands out. It, how much of that, of getting to like crazy weight is like great genetics? For, like, in other words, if we all started, you, me, and three other guys, mm -hmm. and we're all start training like day one, do we all get here if we train right and, and everything? Or you're like, well, no, some people would just plateau at like 300 and the rest of us, you know what I mean? Or is that something that it's just like by chance that like that would happen. That's the coolest thing about being human is that like the interpretation that we get from anything is different for all of us. So right. the inputs that we get is so much different than the output that we that we get. You have some people that are super positive, anything negative that comes in, they're just super happy about it and they turn it into a positive. And you're like, what? How do yeah. the fuck do they do that? Yeah. Um, so some people with training, they they would their body would handle the training as a negative. For other people, they would handle the it would handle it as a positive. Some people would gain tons of muscle mass. Some people would gain tons of strength. You might have one guy who like doesn't really go hardly anywhere. You know, maybe he's really? worked out in that same group for six years and he gained, you know, three pounds of muscle and lost a pound of fat. Meanwhile, the other guys gained, you know, 15 pounds of muscle or so something the, like the, that. And there's basically, it's, it's like the variables are too great and we just don't know. And the variables are massive. Yeah. Uh, we all would like to pin our success to hard work uh, and no matter what it is, but there's a lot of statistics that point to uh, not not just things like genetics, but our zip code being like one of the premier things that still uh, has to do with uh, how successful people are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you handicap yourself and say, well, I grew up in a shitty neighborhood, so I can't do anything. Yeah. However, uh, it does mean for some other people, someone like myself grew up upper middle class. I did start out a little bit further on the, you know, track, the race track of life, you know, yeah. than other people. And sure. I'm not ashamed to admit I had two amazing parents. They yeah. were there for everything, kiss my boo-boos, give me hugs, give me love. Yeah, I didn't need to go outside and externally search for that. So in short, when it comes to like training, uh, the training for one person is gonna be massively different for another. 
who the fuck knows why. Yeah. Genetics play a big role. I mean, look at Ensema. Like Ensema's on my podcast. Yeah. He's uh, 6'2", 240, 250, hung like a goddamn horse. We can only imagine. (laughs) I am a tobacco guy. I've always been a tobacco guy. Something about tobacco and conversation makes me feel like they go hand in hand. They got alternatives for everything these days, even meat for Christ's sakes. But where's the high quality nicotine free tobacco alternatives? If you're 21 and over and if you dip or chew tobacco pouches or long cut, you've got to try this tobacco alternative, Black Buffalo Zero. Black Buffalo Zero is everything you love about dipping but without the actual tobacco leaf, stem, or nicotine. It is literally made out of edible green leaves and food grade ingredients with the same flavor, texture, aroma, and pack as traditional tobacco products they've got all the flavors we know and love winter green mint straight they even have blood orange and peach and they sell their products at blackbuffalo.com black buffalo zero is available both long cuts and pouches and let me tell you something they are small batch made in the usa and and if you're looking if you're a tobacco guy like me and you're looking for an alternative here's where you need to go it's 2022 are you still dipping traditional tobacco or those white portion things if so and you're 21 it's time to get with black buffalo zero it's everything you love about dipping just without the actual tobacco leaf stem or nicotine head to blackbuffalo.com and use the promo code two bears at checkout for 15 percent off your first order that's the best offer you're going to find, but you have to use our code, the number two bears for 15% off your order. One last time, that's the promo code two bears for 15% off your order. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Got Bush? You definitely do. If you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor, Manscaped. Taking control of your Bush is important. These products are so good, you're going to be showing pride in your new Bush free yard. It's a fact that you will have the best kept nutsack on the cul de sac. Save big and be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our page, manscaped.com slash bears for 20% off and free shipping. Whether you're looking to go bald like an eagle or just in need of a safe trim, Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming package. I recommend the Performance Package 4.0. You get the Lawnmower 4.0, and this electric trimmer is a Bush's worst nightmare so get 20 percent off and free shipping by heading to manscaped.com slash bears k bush may be trending at the moment but your bush needs some help that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash bears don't be a fool and purchase manscaped's ultimate bushwhacking tools <laughs> and uh extremely muscular i mean it's like five percent body fat or something it's or really crazy physique yeah. that guy but that's yeah. i mean that some of that is obviously his genetics but he works really hard too absolutely yeah 100 percent that, I mean, the the horse part is not from his hard work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just. <laughs> it's from the yeah. bib hanger that he's using. Yeah, that, that dude is. And he's also super competitive in jujitsu, right? Yeah, he is, yeah. When it comes to the lifting side of things, so there is a, there is like a mindset, you know, of that, believing in yourself, believing that you can do it. That's a that I, I, that kind of fascinates me because you said this about your brother. I, I also met your brother, mm-hmm. um, uh, Chris. Chris, at the at the show and then at the gym the next day. He's insanely strong. And you're like, he can just like go pick up 500 pounds. 725 pound deadlift. See if you can pull it up on his Instagram, 725 pound deadlift or maybe 735 for two reps the other day, completely out of nowhere. <laughs> he's a monster now he is using a trap bar and the range of motion is a little shorter or whatever and he's a short stock, <laughs> stocky guy we can make whatever excuses we want but he's his nickname is the boar for a reason he's is that uh, right there yeah, there you go he's a strong, how old is he two fake hips uh knee surgeries when he was young as well he's uh gonna be 50 coming up in november okay that's bert's age and guess what bert will be 50 in november yeah look at that a fucking animal yeah, and he, one rep wasn't good enough, so he had to do another. Okay. Now, interesting with him, he's, he's in tons of pain all the time. He, yeah. you know, and you would think like, okay, well, it's from the lifting, but... Yeah, get the baby we've done, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've done all kinds of stuff with him where we've, uh, we've had him, you know, back off from lifting and stuff. He just... We all have our own problems. You know, we all have our own issues, yeah. and we're always trying to figure out ways of solving them. And for him, uh, he's had chronic pain since he was a kid, so he's still working on trying to figure out that is kind of interesting though your your records and your history with lifting and you have a sibling yeah who's five years older who's like oh i'm just casually 
deadlifting 725 pounds. And he's always been really strong. In high school, I think he squatted like 675, which is 745 pound plates on the bar. I mean, but I do think there's this thing yeah. that you said, because you hear about this, that like people who, who can really, are really strong and lift, like, about like turning it on, like saying like, here's the weight. And then it's just like, I don't know what happens in the head mm -hmm. for you or when that, when that happens. But you know, I've never had like a crazy lift like that. Like the, you know, the most I ever lifted was thinking, well, usually like trying to get reps of 225. Right. Like with squats, with, with a bench. I mean, I've pulled with deadlifts, you know, close to like 400 when I got into it which was not even that long ago. And then I got injured. So I never, I've never had, but I, when you see that, you go like that person's brain must do something different or they go like, this is 700 pounds. The brain Boom. literally does something different. I think that strength is a form of genius in some way. It's yeah. uh, very much connected to how you can fire your central nervous system. And I think that's a, a kind of a, people don't think about that that much when it comes to training. They're always thinking about the muscular system and people building up muscles and bodybuilding but your central nervous system is what's responsible for being extremely explosive. And I've seen certain guys just be able to demonstrate it in ways that <clears throat> it doesn't, wouldn't matter how I trained. I would just never be able to, even with the strength that I had, Yeah, there's a guy that uh, lives in our area named Jeremy Avila, and he picks up 800 pounds for a deadlift faster than you can get up off, out of a chair. I mean, he just, it's in the blink of an eye. Have you seen this dude? You're like what the fuck on Instagram? Swole. Uh, you know there's a lot of insane. There's a, a but this dude. The on. I am something whatever. I Bro, forget. this guy, the guy who does the heavy zercher squats and all that shit. There's a bunch of dudes that are crazy strong. Um, man, the strength I, of the the strength of the uh, female athletes has uh, really come up a lot too, and that's embarrassing because like I was I was working on my deadlift a while back and. I did like 525 for a set of three or something. I was like, this is kind of cool. I'm like, I'm going to post this. And I was about to post it. <laughs> and I saw that uh, this powerlifting girl, she did uh, 525 for like a set of five. I'm like, I'm not going to post it. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, Steffi Cohen, who's, you know, hold multiple uh, all-time world records. Just okay. <laughs> this handle is ITS D-R-E-A-M. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dream. That guy. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's insane. What in the fuck, man? No, it doesn't make sense. People throw him stuff as he's like got a bunch of weight on his back. Bro, he, is he doing, catches a water bottle, drinks it, and, and he'll it. also do like I think this one on the like yeah, he's walking around doing this shit. Like I'm on my phone. Yeah, talk about text neck, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, the again these uh, obviously this guy has been training for a long time. I mean, look at that. That's just insane. I mean, that could be you, any. Um, see now as I would, it's, it's hard for me to say because yeah. of the weights that I lifted. So people are like, oh yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't think I'm anything like that guy. No, I don't, I don't, I don't have like whatever that guy has. I don't, I don't have, I don't know. I just don't, I, I mean, don't he's think he's alone I here. No spotter. No, no. What is I, that? Is that five, six plates? He's got no, no wrist wraps, no elbow no. sleeves. And he's just there. You know, benching it like it's nothing. This reminds me talking to old NFL guys about Reggie White. You remember oh. Reggie White? They were like, Dude. died in his sleep of sleep apnea. Sleep by apnea, way. that's true. But they said when, when you're on the field, Reggie White played oh, yeah. no tape. Like everyone, you know, is all taped oh, yeah. up. He's just like, ah, like just jogs out of the locker yeah. room and would throw offensive tackles like they were children. With one arm. Yeah. Yeah, he would take the call one. It, they call it the hump move. Yeah. He would go, boom, and just fucking throw them. And you're yeah. like, oh, my God. And it was, I mean, it was demoralizing, I'm sure, if you're his, you're like, I'm an NFL offensive tackle, and this guy is fucking tossing me around. Just crazy. Like, that's yeah, that's that insane. Super Bowl there where he's diving right there. and That's got to be insane to feel that kind of power. Yeah, no fucking tape on the wrist. Just, just like, tape for what? unreal man yeah i mean you, you know from like doing your 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 stand-up act i'm sure like when you get off stage you're probably thinking like that was that was like pretty good but i can tweak that a yeah. little bit yeah. and maybe you watch it or maybe you hear it back you maybe record you get them all, a, yeah. uh, a criticism from a friend that's a, that's a positive criticism and you can kind of work on it it's the best actually when that happens and you keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking lifting is just feels to me like no different like really like oh man i i 
I could have done that a little bit better. My timing could, I wonder if I did it this way. A lot of it for me was practice. I would practice and practice. And I think because my experience in school uh, where I was put in like specialty classes and I was always considered to be slow, my slowness later on became a huge asset. Like, I don't care how long this takes. I'm just going to figure this out. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. And that, that that mindset contributes to what you do. Oh, it was huge because yeah. I would practice the lift over and over again. So I might get done with a workout and then I would say, I wonder, you know, I wonder how it would feel if I wore those shoes. I wonder how it would feel if I went with a wider stance, a closer stance, or what if my hands were wider or further apart? And it was try all, just, all those things. I'd try all of them and spend Bro, hours doing it. Look how fucking jacked we look today. We look great. You know what? That, that polo... I mean, I need bigger fucking arms. Should kicks. we? I think we should swap polos and just kind of see what it looks like. That's a nice looking polo. What is that? It's really expensive. It's um, <laughs> it's Canali. You look great. Thanks, man. What is that? This is a Lulu. Oh, those are super nice. I think these were in the pecs. Yeah, those are made for guys like you. I think mine won't look the same. <laughs> uh, you got nice pecs, though. Thanks, brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey you know what they I say see, what more pecs more sex that's what i'm talking about more pecs more checks yeah mm -hmm. i'm trying to get there big, man big checks i'm trying to get there dude I'm, I'm i'm telling you i'm motivated um one of the things i also want to point out because i it's actually the reason i had them pull that picture of you when you were like three over 300 pounds mm -hmm. <laughs> is to show yes you were powerful if you're an athlete there but you're overweight like you're very you're, much so yeah, yeah. And you got to here. So what got Mark Bell from being that big? Like how, how long did that take and what kind of changes did you have to make? I always tell people it took 10 years. It, it didn't literally take 10 years to lose all that weight, but it took 10 years to kind of figure it out and to stay in better shape. Look at you, man. Yeah. It, it's been, it's been an awesome journey. So in that, in that other picture there, uh, yeah, I'm probably about 325 or 320, Fucking something like that. A. <laughs> yeah. That's so big. But I was also very, you know, obviously you can imagine I was very unhealthy. Like I got my blood work done and <coughs> what I was trying to do is I was trying to gain as much size as I could while still having some of my blood markers uh, be be okay. But why do we have- They like, weren't. They were getting skewed. Why do, like, because I, I saw that one documentary on um, Netflix mm. where they were talking about like it's called something about strength and they were like they go the physiology they go they're because people were like how come the, the the strong men are all also like they have big bellies like they're, right. they're all humongous right and somebody explained it very well which obviously i don't recall but said that like yeah there, there's a certain once you get to a certain if you're trying to push around a certain amount of weight you just have to consume <laughs> there's no such thing as being like a lean guy who's also like yeah dragging 700 pounds around in my world we say there's no skinny champions yeah really <laughs> that's what we say yeah it it helps you know weight moves weight so the more that you weigh uh the easier it is to to uh be able to move around more weight it's probably actually the simplest thing like for somebody that's listening that wants to get stronger the fastest way to get stronger is to gain weight is to be in a caloric surplus for a little while. However, it's like that can be unhealthy, but if you're a younger guy and you're really thin, it's like that might be the route you want to go for a little while because lifting uh, heavier uh, will have, it will help you to have a lot more muscle mass. And so those pictures you're seeing of me being 300 plus, I also had a ton of muscle mass. So it made my dieting it made everything from that point easier so when you when when you go from that like where we see you there real big 325 to that I, I realize it's a process but a big part of this is just getting into a caloric deficit like you know what i mean like is it is it i mean is is it also you're not trying to bench 800 right yeah. so you can start going for like maybe more rep stuff as opposed to just like three reps and trying to get the big I think the the it's you know kind of considered an energy balance equation you know calories calories in calories out uh I think it's a decent overarching theme uh for people to have in mind like yes you do need to figure out a way to probably eat less the problem with eating less is it can make you want to do less because you literally have less energy yeah 
You know, our energy doesn't come from coffee. Our energy doesn't come from energy drinks. Energy drinks, zero sugar energy drinks don't have any energy. <coughs> they right. just have caffeine in them, which is a stimulant for the central nervous system, but it's not really giving us true energy. Food gives you energy, but it can get confusing because sometimes you eat and then you feel tired. Yeah. So th to try to figure out the energy equation can be a little bit difficult, but in short, I'm more a fan of food selection, food choices, rather than really worrying too much about calories. If, in my opinion, if you eat meat and you eat eggs and then you trickle everything down from there, uh, I think you're in a really good spot. So any types of meat, uh, eggs, maybe some dairy and some fruit. Now, even with that, you can still figure out a way to not lose weight and you can still figure out a way to gain weight through that. Then you might have to chop out dairy or you might have to chop out, cut back on. I mean, fruit's not really going to be offensive. You might have to chop out some dairy just because it makes it really was, easy to eat. Was there a day or a moment that you went from being the 325 pound guy where you're like, I'm, I'm done and I'm moving? There was? Yeah, uh, I fell with 1,085. So that's how small these, uh, these lines are of being able to do a certain weight and being able to not do a certain weight. I squatted 1,080 and I did it in a competition. And then maybe like six months later, uh, I wanted to, I was kind of lined up according to my training and stuff, lined up to squat a little over 1,100 pounds. And 1,085 was my second attempt in a competition. You get three attempts. And so the last attempt was gonna be like 1,115. Um, in training and stuff, I smashed an 1,100 pound squat. I felt really good. so. Uh, the 1,085 wasn't even anything I thought was going to be any problem. But as I was going down with the weight, my weight shifted a little bit and they can pull up the video of it. It's, it's not, it's not too, too horrifying, but, uh, uh okay. I did fall with 1,085 on my back and it was, it was definitely, uh, life altering in a lot of ways. I didn't, I didn't, uh, break anything. Um, but I was fucked up for about three months and, from that point, I was like, Hey, you know what? Now I'm just kind of fat. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't have the ability to demonstrate my strength. So is it this let me get in better shape and let me Here, see mute that will you? will you mute it. Yeah. It's let muted. me see what I can do. So, and this is competition or no, this is, this is a competition. Yeah. Okay. And so you're about to, oh, so this, but this fucks you up. Some of this. Mind all, right, blow, all, right, huh? all right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait till this is do done. A cheers. Wait till this is done. Yeah, so I'm getting set, and I think I believe this first squat. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the one where I fall, but this one might be the 1,036 that I do first, and then the next one might be the one where I fall, or this one could be the one where I fall. I'm not sure. Okay. How long ago? Whew, man, it's probably uh, a good, you know, ten years ago or so. Yeah, and see, even on that one, my weight shifted kind of uh -huh. weird, and like it got a little funky. You're unrecognizable there. <laughs> Well, yeah, with that much, uh, that much weight compressing my spine. And, you know, I have uh, my buddy uh, spotting me back there, Taco Truck, the tallest Mexican in the history of the world. <laughs> if you watch, you know, he just does a horrible job. I think he just, you know, he was just like, fuck him, man. Like, he's, I'm not going to help Mark with a well, 1085. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of his fucking jokes about my height. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It takes a long time to kind of even like just line up under these weights. It takes a lot of prep. And so you see me like digging my feet in and moving my body around and lots of wiggling going on and all kinds of weird stuff. And you see the squat suit. That's that yep. thing that I'm wearing. I'm all wrapped up tight in. Oh, fuck, dude. And here goes the tumble. Yo. And when I sprung up out of this, like one of my guys comes up to me and he's like, hey, you know, uh, you know, use my, you know, use my arm, you know, walk on me. And I was like, fuck you, get away from me. I'm going to walk away. From, like, I want to be able to walk away on my own power. Even though I was, I was pretty fucked up. I probably should, <laughs> I probably yeah. should, should have took What is this? Uh, Tell advice. me what this is. This is a uh, mind bullet. This is Kratom. Kratom. Down the hatch. Boom. This should probably fix my cold. It might. This is a product I sell. You can get it at mindbullet.com. It's what's up, motherfucker. <laughs> I, See how it changes you like that right away? Yeah. Puts you in a good mood. Chopping heads off today. Mm-hmm. 
I'm home for two months and there's nothing I love more than cooking dinner for my family. And especially with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal delivery kit. Choose from 55 weekly options. Select meals from the Taste of the Summer series that are sure to become everyone's new favorites like Old Bay Shrimp and Sausage Boil, or you can bust out on the grill. Nice, warm evening. Make dinner from their HelloFresh cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. Going away this summer, right? No? Update your delivery ad address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. The plans are flexible, so they work around your ever-changing schedule. And these are foolproof, step-by-step -step recipes where you're going to get a joyful cooking experience with a stress-free summer. Uh, I'm telling you right now, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant and even cheaper than the grocery store shopping that you're going to do. That's money back in your pocket, people. I love HelloFresh. I love cooking HelloFresh for my family. It is one of my favorite things to do. It forces us to all sit down as a unit and talk. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Cave16 and use code Cave16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. It is highly encouraged. Uh, that's horrifying. So you said, when you say you were fucked up from that. Do you mean mentally fucked up from it or, or physically fucked up or both? Yeah, all of the above. So uh, at that time, we lived in a, uh, a house that had our bedroom upstairs. I had to sleep downstairs on like a pullout couch for a couple of weeks because I just couldn't get up the stairs. I couldn't bend my leg enough to go up the stairs. Yeah, you had a thousand pounds. Yeah, I, my legs were really swollen. My knee was swollen. My ankle was swollen. And this this was Everything the turning was really, point, though. It was. I was like, you know, I I need to take better control of my health, and I need to, to get in better shape. And so, um, did your diet? Was that the first thing that changed, though? First thing that changed, yeah. I I, I immediately shifted into what I would call like a paleo style diet, which mm -hmm. is basically just meat, fruit. Um, I got rid of a lot of other excess carbohydrates. The hard thing for me is, uh, I I've always had a sweet tooth, mm -hmm. and that was a hard one to control around 7 p.m. and beyond is where I just want to like eat ice cream and cookies and like a bunch of shit Bro, that's like that. my toughest yeah. uh, window too is that like I, I was trying to pay attention on like all right what are you doing every you know what I mean right. to myself yeah well, you and I were and talking I, about yeah being I was mindful. like my breakfasts are great like exemplary right. um lunch you know it can be a challenge on the road but at home it's really not right I'm like the only time that I feel like I'm really like oh this is like where the work comes in is like the evening you know, uh, the, I, they say idle time is the devil's playground, right? Sure. So you finally fucking did everything for the day. And yeah. in your mind the night before you're like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. And then you're checking those boxes all day long. You're kicking ass and then you get home and you sit down and you finally have a chance to eat. And you might even make a pretty good decision with dinner. Yeah, exactly. But now exactly. it's now, now you're just totally chilling and you're totally relaxed and you know, in boxing, they say protect yourself at all times. Right. And I've always liked that mindset for life in general. Like, yeah, man, just keep your hands up, pay attention, like pay attention to what's going on around you. So even at that time of day, if that is an issue for you, it's good to just try to see like what's reasonable for you to do. Like, is it reasonable for you to completely get rid of ice cream? Pro probably not. Probably not realistic for some people that really enjoy it a lot. Can you switch to eating ice cream two or three times a week? You probably can. That sounds that sounds pretty good. Yeah. How about every time that you buy like a thing of ice cream, a carton of ice cream or a Ben and Jerry's, that you just buy one and when that runs out, don't buy it again for a couple of days. Right. Go back to the store, buy it again. Oh right. Don't one. have the stash. Yeah. 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 Don't have yeah, don't have a, a plethora of fucking yeah. ice cream to dip into. It's good. Um it it can be really difficult to have, you know, cookies and all these different things around for some people. So for some folks, the answer is just like, don't buy it Yeah. for some people that doesn't really still do the trick. Cause then they're like, well, what about my kids? And it's like, well, uh, <laughs> your kids don't need processed food either. Like none of us need processed foods for survival. Yeah. So you want to try to give your children better options too. And that can be a pain in the ass because sometimes you're going to have to, supply like fresh food like what's the option when you don't have processed foods uh the other options are to have fresh food so then you have to have fruit out you might have to slice stuff up for them 
Um, you said something to me giant once pain too, that I've I shared, and now my friends and like Sean says this to me all the time. He goes, "You're not six. You don't need a fucking snack." Yeah, because you. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, my big one yeah, that I share said, with a lot of people. You said that to me. You go, you're not your kid. You don't need a fucking snack. And I'm right? like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you don't need to like, you know, you don't need to baby yourself. At the same time, it's like we do need to suckle. We do need to pacify. Yeah, we do, we do, we do. We do need but to But I think the message is it makes sense. It's like right. you don't need to satisfy everything. Like one of the things I realized the other day, I remember the whole day had gone by. I was home and I... I think I had checked on my boys and I'm just walking back to my room and I open the fridge and I'm just like looking inside the fridge. Mm. And for a second, I just go like, oh, I'm not even hungry. Like right now, I go, I'm not hungry. I'm just looking in here to be like, to like <laughs> fill this moment. Yeah. So I just shut the fridge and I was like, you're not even hungry. Like, I'm not even like disappointed that I, sh I'm like, you're just, just go back to the bedroom. Right. Went back in there and it was fine. But I think a lot of times there there are those things of like mindless consumption where you're like, well, I'm walking by a pantry. You're never going to find, what's here. you're never going to find what you need at the bottom of a bag of chips. Yeah. You're never going to find what you need at the bottom of a uh, tub of Ben and Jerry's. It doesn't have the nutrients in it that your body needs. Your body needs macronutrients and needs micronutrients and obviously potato chips and ice cream and stuff is full of macronutrients, but there's hardly any micronutrients in there. And even worse and more offensive to the body's metabolism is the fact that it doesn't have protein in it. Yeah, All living things are in search of protein. When we as humans go to eat Doritos and things like that, it really bypasses and overrides our ability to recognize when we're full. You start eating those chips and eating those chips and they don't really, they're not anything that's going to fill you. So a lot of people don't realize this, but people that are heavy, people that are gaining weight, uh, they are actually nutrient deficient when it comes to certain types of nutrients. <laughs> right. And they have a surplus of nutrients in other areas. But that's, again, it's uh, an overconsumption of carbohydrates and fat usually, and it's an under eating of protein. So if you just jack that protein up, like that is the ultimate hack. Like anybody that's listening to this right now, if they were to consume maybe two lean sources of protein every day, mm -hmm. that could make an enormous change for and them. And lean proteins for people, chicken breasts, uh, like ground turkey, mm -hmm. they could have any type of fish basically. Yeah, maybe like bison, bison maybe, maybe certain whites. types of red meat because yep. there's like 96.4 uh, lean ground beef. There's some of that meat that I had sent to you. That was awesome. That was really good, the Piedmontese yep. stuff. That's that a great good. option. It's almost like, it's kind of a hybrid in between a chicken breast and a yeah. uh, and a steak, but still tastes uh, tender. It still tastes All really right, good. All right, now let's get into the fun. Let's get me on some gear, dude. Let's get me... Some Winstraw, Deca. Oh, you're not already on some shit? No, nah, man. When I came in today, you had a kind of a chest pump going. Fucking, look at that shit, dude. Maybe you did some push-ups before I got no in No joke. Here. Look at this shit. Huh? Uh, can you hook me up? You got the this is, this is a This is a really interesting topic, you know, because I've been uh, on performance-enhancing drugs for like 20-plus years. Uh-huh. Um, I forgot to celebrate with my birthday cake that was going to have 20 syringes in it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awesome. You know, Louis Simmons had a great statement about steroids. It was really interesting. He was my mentor. Uh -huh. uh, he ran the strongest gym in the history of the world, West Side Barbell. Uh, Louis Simmons said, I didn't create steroids. I'm just smart enough to use them. <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought that was like a, a, an That's interesting. That's what I'm fucking talking about. I know. I always thought that, I always thought that was really interesting, but you know, when it comes to making the leap into that, that yeah. it's it's an interesting thing because I, I almost don't know what to tell people. Tell me where to get it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Here's where you want to go. Now, uh, on a more serious note, I do feel like it's a it's it's a big decision for a lot of people. Uh -huh. Maybe for folks that are like in our age group, yeah. it's not a big of a deal. Because it's like, oh, you know what? You can just use some TRT and you can see if you like it. It's not going to... I'll tell you this, it's not going to hurt anything to experiment with it, especially at our age. At a younger age, it's that's like, where it's more dicey. It's like, I don't know, man. Like if you were on for a couple of years and you wanted to be real big and then you weren't able to have kids later on or something, it's uh -huh. like, I, I don't know if I would blame the steroids or not. It seems like your sperm count. And What's all these the things, best one though? What's the best steroid to take? Yeah. Cause there's like so many names out there. Like yeah. what's, what's the thing that like, the thing that moves the needle the most is, is testosterone. Yeah. 
just flat out testosterone. Flat out T. Flat out testosterone. And, and taking like mild amount of testosterone, it'll jack your testosterone up, which will help you uh, gain more muscle mass. It won't have too many negative side effects. Uh, we start to take larger amounts of testosterone. That's where your estrogen and other those other things, those other hormones can kind of push up as well. What about HGH? That's what all the ball players were doing for a while. Is that a good one? What happens with things like growth hormone and insulin, like if you were to just take growth hormone and insulin, you would probably look phenomenal. You'd probably be like big and jacked and everything. <laughs> the, I'm in. I'm fucking in. Stop the, talking. The issue is that, uh, I mean, there's several issues, especially when it comes to insulin, but there's there's some issues with, you just have to take it often. You got to, you know, pin yourself pretty much every day. Some of these bodybuilders are, are pinning themselves multiple times a day, taking shots multiple times a day. They're using different types of insulin to shuttle carbohydrates and nutrients into the muscles. So you get into this thing where you all of a sudden like become like a chemist oh. and you become like a scientist and you're sitting there trying to figure out. And when you get off that stuff, everything. So that, so then you end up with the, and then what? Right. So if, if you and I were like, Hey man, I, like let's figure out a way for you to lose 40 pounds and we're just going to get you just super dialed in. We want to do a photo shoot or something. Yeah. You end up in that same spot. You end up in that spot. And then what, what's your recovery going to be like from that? It's going to suck because we're going to have, we're going to have you uh, lose too much weight too fast. You're going to pull off muscle mass as well. Mm -hmm. And then so on the back end of that, when you go to come out of that, it's going to be very difficult for you to, uh, you're just going to look flat. You're going to look kind of skinny fat and all those kinds of yeah. things. So, you always have to kind of think in life, in business, Shit. in the gym, any of these things. You got to think, fuck. And then what am I going to do? So, so if you take, what you're telling me is the take the long road and mm -hmm. do the work like a fucking loser. There are some good companies out there that can help a lot when it comes to like getting blood work done yeah. and examining whether uh, you should uh, you should take that leap. But steroids won't do for you. They they won't make your decisions for you. You know, yeah. you, like you said earlier, like you got to do it yourself. Yeah. So there's not a steroid or a pill currently that I know of that is going to encourage you to make better decisions all the time. Although right. potentially there could be certain things that do that. But one thing that testosterone does that is undersold is it does give you a lot of zip and a lot of just like motivation. So one time on my YouTube channel, I was looking at somebody had a comment and they said, well, it's easier for you to do all this shit and to be fired up every day because you're on steroids. And I read it and I was like, I don't know if that makes, and I was like, I think it does make sense. I was like, this guy's right. <laughs> so for somebody that's kind of down and, and uh, I, I've heard of some doctors even handling depression, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not prescribing this, but I've heard of some people saying that it could be something that could help certain people with certain types of depression, so. Well, and there you have it. We did not <laughs> tell you what to do or whether or not you should do it. This is all your choice. Talk to your doctor and don't think that you can actually hold us accountable for your failing health. Go back. How to am I doing as a second bear today? You're fucking phenomenal. Dude. I'm a power. I'm a power bear, right? First of all, you haven't made up one thing yet. Is that all Bert does? He makes shit up. <laughs> You've allowed me to complete multiple sentences. He's full of shit most of the time. You're not drinking beer and tequila and Red Bull and whiskey and You don't know what's in here. That's true, I don't. You don't know me, bro. <laughs> That's true. That's true. What is that? It's a coffee. <laughs> this is good. It has steak shake in it. It does, yeah. I mixed you up some steak shake and some coffee. Steak shake is, uh, it's got liver, kidney, heart, spleen. You don't taste any of that shit in there, do you? I don't. It tastes great. That's what I, I have a cold and I feel better. There you go. What and happened? I love that kratom. Kratom's it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's uh got some weird like laws around it. So if people go check out the website, they'll see that you have to pay with some sort of weird e check thing. But why? I just think anything that works, um, the government wants to try to like regulate it. Yeah, you know? like meth. Because you can smoke meth and you'll fucking get your tasks done. It's great. It's great. Is it illegal? <laughs> I don't even know. But if someone's giving you a hard time on your meth, get Kratom. <laughs> I feel See? fucking dialed in right oh. now. I'm serious. Yeah, no, it, it's, it, uh, it does give you, it, for me, I use it before podcasts. I use it a lot before workouts. People are always worried about like shit being addicting, but I mean, people are sucking down coffee all day long. I, I think that if Kratom is addicting, it's just in the simple fact that it's super effective Yeah, and that you're going to want to go back to it because it yeah. feels good. So 
Feels great. Um, so you already got into lift today? I didn't. I actually, I lifted yesterday and uh, today I got in some running. I ran around the uh, the Capitol building over there. There were some hills. It's nice. And it was hot as fuck. Super hot. Have that you, you Texas haven't, sun beating uh, down on me. Run around the lake? That's kind of a nice. I haven't done that. That's but I need nice. to. I need to give that a try because a couple of people were pointing it out to me. And how long uh, do you stay till? When do you leave? I leave on Thursday. Okay. Which is um, what, tomorrow? Do you know yeah. Nick Bear? You know him by chance? No. Nick is a runner. He just finished a, a marathon. He does, um, he's a runner and a lifter. He's fucking jacked. He's local. He's close by. You should do some stuff with him. I think you guys would get along really well. Oh, that'd be cool. Super motivating, super inspiring guy, uh, former military guy. Let's see. Uh, so I'm going to. Oh, he looks just like me. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to meet that guy. I'm uh, <coughs> going to uh, hop on his podcast tomorrow. So oh, you are? Kind of neat. Yeah. Nice. And it's just, it's awesome that there's a lot of information out there that can help people. It's the best part of yeah. having this kind of access to people in the internet. It, it, it is that you get to learn things. You're like, I would never know this without. You were um, mentioning earlier about people not knowing how to work out. Yeah. How did you learn how to work out? Well, I, I mean, know you have a trainer now. But. Well, yeah. Well, so my dad was uh, a competitive Olympic weightlifter. Mm. So, and I never took really to the Olympic, and he was a fucking terrible coach, but he, um, he was a multi multiple time state champion. So he was a state champion at 14. Um, and then again, and like, uh, 19. And then I think his last time was at 27. Mm. So that was in Ohio and Kentucky. So weights were always at the house. And, but like I said, you know, he was doing power cleans. Snatch was like mm. his favorite thing. And he was, he always thought he was like, I'd be like, how much do you bench? He's like, we don't bench. I was like, what? And he was like, we don't bench. We're Olympic weightlifters. I was like, all right. I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> that was the original yeah. name of my website was how much you bench. Yeah. How much you bench. Because Saturday Night Live had a skit. I don't know if you oh, ever yeah. saw it. Yeah. It's like, uh, they would have people call in. Yeah. And they would say, how much you bench? And it was all guys with just crazy jacked upper bodies yeah. and little skinny little legs. legs. Yeah. And one guy called in and he's like, so I was benching 225 the other day. And they hang up on him. <laughs> They're like, give us some real numbers to work with. <laughs> That's it's, hilarious. It's Farley and those guys from back in the day. Yeah, I think it was like a combination of him giving me some of it. And then I was actually playing sports. I was always on a, a team, especially mm. football. So football was like, you know, my favorite sport as a kid and i played from fourth grade through high school so there was always you know at least weight rooms associated mm. with most of that time not not the peewee stuff so we were always in gyms and then even when i went to college i didn't play but i would go to like the school's gym and i never i never uh went i would say like i never got obsessive mm. to the point where i'd take it to the next level but it was always like a maintenance kind of and i can actually Think about, you know, times in my life, like getting to L.A. When I first got to L.A., I moved to Hollywood. And the first, one of the first things I did was join the Hollywood Y. Hmm. And I would play pickup basketball and lift. And I was actually, it's probably one of the most healthy times of my life physically, right? I'm, I moved there at 22. Um, I weighed 185, 190. And I was super active. I mean, I was, I was at that Y, like probably five days a week. It was a social place for me. And like I said, you know, I'd get in the cardio from all that basketball and the lifting. And I can even like, if you go like year by year, I can tell you like, I got this gig mm. in post. I started working the graveyard shift. I stopped working out. I started eating shittier. I put on 25 pounds in, on during one show, like a show, meaning like I'm working on posts on a show. And like, all of a sudden, I'm 225. I'm unmotivated, and like, and that stuff like just snowballs, you know. Mm. Like you just go like, oh, now I'm in a I'm in a routine of not being active. And then it was like getting road work as a feature act, meaning you're the middle act in a show mm. in a club, and this kind of the stress of that lifestyle, and just getting into like being up till three in the morning every night. You're eating at the club. You're eating chicken fingers and mozz and you just you fall into the cycle of like somebody goes, "Do you work out?" You're like, "I I fucking used to work. I don't work yeah. out." Yeah, and then and you kind of embrace it. That's the weird thing is you go like, "No, I'm an unhealthy guy." You it's, boast uh, about it. It's stress mitigation, right? Like yeah. you're you're. <clears throat> but if you kind of think about it, like just like man to man or as a man, you yeah. think about it. Think about it as a challenge. Yes. Like why do you have to react that way? 
Like I if you see yeah. somebody react, like overreact, and they fucking blow up and they yell at somebody, uh, they get really pissed at an employee or something. You're like, wow, that's a that is a crazy way to treat somebody. I can't believe I can't even believe I just saw that type yeah. of thing, right? But that is a similar reaction that we have with ourselves and our own body, our kind of internal stuff of like you're trying to reward yourself, but you're actually like you're doing a lot of. I hate to kind of sound like the fitness freak on that side of it, but you're doing a lot of damage to yourself. And you think about what I what I try to wrap my mind around often is I think that everything is kind of a skill set. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was to come at like Joe Rogan and try to take him down, it's like, good luck with that shit. Like he's a trained fighter or yeah. someone like in SEMA who's training jujitsu. Yeah. They have a, they have a particular skill set. And can we start to do a little bit better with our skill set of how we're uh, managing our stress? Like how dope is it to have your stress mitigation be like, you know what? Fucking this, this day sucked this happened, this happened. One of my, you know, I got a call that a friend died or all these different things happen. I'm going for a run. Yeah. I'm out of here, man. I'm going to go, for, I'm going to go punch the heavy bag and kick it for a while. I think one of the things that's super powerful that people can do is to look at nostalgia. Like what are the things that are nostalgic from your past? You mentioned basketball. Yeah. And I know you had that accident with basketball, but what happened? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, you have that uh, that boom box behind you, you know, like nostalgia is super powerful. I bet you yeah. get, I bet you people come in and comment on that thing a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's probably a lot of people like, oh man, I remember. Yeah. And they get all hyped up. So what are the things that you used to like to do that are maybe healthy? Maybe you used to like to ride your bike. Dude, you know, can I tell you the truth? I, I think one of the reasons that I've been motivated, especially since I worked out at your gym, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. You think I'm is, handsome. Is that you're super hot. I knew it. You have it's these glutes. Well, it's not your eyes are gorgeous. Your skin is soft, but it's um it's the sled because the sled honestly brought me back to football. Ah, I swear to you, like I remember great. that day pulling the sled and pushing the sled and all that stuff. We went it, in deep water that day. We did. We did. We and did a lot of laps. I had a cramp on my flight that my entire tour crew was like he is having a heart attack they thought i was dying <laughs> a leg cramp dude it was also a strange one because yeah. I've, i'm used to calf cramps and i've had it's serious i've had hamstring, hamstring but this was inside hamstring into the quad into the groin and i was like ah! and and everybody was like he's dying they all thought i was dying um but that sled stuff was like, it really did. It's like why I want to get, we talked about that. Um, the tank. The tank. Yep. Uh, it's like, I, I want that because I, it's one of those kinds of activities. I go, I really enjoy this. I like pushing this thing. I like pulling it. You know, my son, he told me, he was like, I like the sled because my son's 18. He's been working out too. Um, he's like, I like the sled a lot because it's just a form of advanced walking. And I was like, that's fucking genius. Yeah, that's yeah. all that it is. Yeah. So it's simple. It's like, what are the things that you can start to implement into your life that are, you know, some type of activity when it comes to lifting weights? Uh, the unfortunate thing is like, I'm a big proponent of lifting weights. So I think that it's important for everyone to explore some type of lifting, but how much lifting do you really need? I think like two or three days a week is a decent start. But again, remember what I said in the beginning, sometimes too small of a challenge is not a challenge enough. So you might have to encourage yourself at the jump to say, you know what, I'm going to work out for all of July. I'm going to go to the gym all of July. Yeah. The other thing is, is that we can stop looking at working out as going to the gym. So you can just do push-ups or squats. But again, if you lower the bar too much and that challenge isn't great enough, you might not hold yourself responsible for it. So you, you have gotta to be, be like honest with yourself about yeah. what, what is a challenge and what's right too passive almost. But some really simple things that people can do. If you have access, if, if your gym has access to any type of sleds, yeah. that would be amazing to do some sled work forward and backwards dragging. Right. You don't right. have to run. Um, a lot of gyms in the country have sleds. They have turf at this point. Most of the gyms have kind of converted over into looking a little bit more like an athletic college style gym rather than yeah. like the, uh, you know, the planet fitness type thing. So if you have access to that, that would be great. If you don't have access to those things, partial range of motion work can really be beneficial. Something like a deadlift out of a rack. Yeah. Going with very, very, very light weights to start and then over time progressing. But you're really just trying to send a message to your body. 
Yeah. So something like a farmer's carry is great. Yeah. And you can do that with dumbbells. You can I do love that. that. Kettlebells. I love that. It doesn't take, it's nice to have stuff that doesn't really require a lot of skill. That farmer's walk is another nostalgic one for me. It also puts my mindset in like, for whatever reason, it just goes to like football. Yeah. And then you kind of like, I don't know, it feels exciting or, or some, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the sled, you go, it feels exciting. Find um, a way to do some squats in your day. Find a way to do some, what's just called hip hinging, which is something that would just look like a deadlift. And for people that are out there who are like, oh, you're, you know, you're already, you're talking about shit that is um, too advanced for me. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. I immediately hear that. Like I, oh, you and I worked out right together. Well, and yeah. I've been training for 30 years. You've been training for 30 years. But I, I mean like the person who's like, I can't do a push up. You could start with like a wall push up. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you could start leaning, like pushing against the wall. If you're like a floor, that makes sense. Like start, on the, just like get moving, get moving in some way. I always say that motion is the lotion. When you start to move, it actually is motivating. Yeah. So people they will wait around to get motivated. But yeah. it, it, it can work that way sometimes. Sometimes you can listen to David Goggins and you can get all fired oh, up yeah. or listen to a speech from Rogan or something and get yeah. all pumped up. I watch all that stuff on sure. YouTube. I, I get excited from that. Uh, but what you'll learn is that when you actually start moving, once you talk to yourself into going to the gym and doing like one thing, it's absolutely ridiculous to go to the gym and only do one thing. Right. So if you talk to yourself into going and doing tricep pushdowns, yeah. you're there and you're like, ah, fuck it. I might as well do some other things. For sure. So you can get the fuckets in either direction. You know, which direction do you want to go in? You can get the fuckets in the, in the correct direction, which is hopefully aiming you towards a lot of your goals. Um, I hope, I hope this uh, podcast serves to like, you know, motivate some people, inspire them in some way. Um, like I said, I, I've been very excited and stuff since since we met and worked out. Um, I hope Bert watches and listens and decides to explore a caloric deficit at some what point. What does your wifey do for working out? My wifey? Uh, she does uh, a Pilates. She does Sick. that a few days a week. Have you ever tried uh, it with her? I have not tried it with her. I have I went to uh, who her, her Pilates mm-hmm. instructor's place... When we were in LA, because that's where she seems went. hard, bro. It's like stretching it with weights, right? Fucked me up. I, it was so hard. It yeah. was so because you realize that a Pilates uh, instructor or, or a person who does it, their core is incredible. <laughs> so they're like they holding positions. Strength. Yeah, it's it's not about they can't throw up three hundred pounds, but they can just hold their body in positions where you're like, I'm ready to tap out, mm-hmm. and they're holding that for like. Two minutes, Shit. you know? Yeah, it was very challenging. I was I was super impressed by it, actually. Um, I was going to ask you, do you still get uh, do you still get nervous when you go and do stand-up? Uh, it depends. It depends. You or always did have, you even ever get nervous, I guess? Yes, for sure. When you do, um, I think it's pretty standard now that if you have like a really big show, like when I do an arena, you have like these butterflies. You're kind of, you're pacing a little more. Your head is more like kind of running through some things. Because you, you realize that you're at, you know, a lot of people there, you know? I mean, some of these shows I have coming up are, you know, 10,000 plus people at, at a show. That's so, so you're cool. Like, That's so, you, so cool. 10,000 people are spending their money it's going crazy. to see you. Like yeah. they, earn, they earn their money. They got their paycheck. Yeah. They're pumped. Because I, I bought tickets to your show uh, a few months in advance and we were all hyped up and we kept talking about it as a family. It's, we were like, oh, we're going, we're going, we're going. It's wild. It, I mean, it, you do feel, I, I tell somebody that when they go, can you believe this? I go, you know, the thing that always gets me is I can't believe somebody gave me their time. Yeah. It's not the money. <laughs> yeah. You go, I can't believe somebody goes, I'm going to spend my evening. Like I'm going to leave the house, mm. park, Go to the, like sit, and I just want to spend my time, yeah, watching you do this. Those butterflies do, definitely come on those big shows. I always say too. I think most stand-ups agree that if you are completely relaxed, that's not a good thing. Mm. You need to have like just a hint. You don't want to be in a panic, but you want like a hint so of anxiety. Spidey senses are a, up a bit. Exactly, yeah. a little bit. Um, the best thing to do too is like if you have a joke that you're not a hundred percent sure on like this could go poorly. <laughs> Those are also the most exciting mm. where you're like, this is either going to, it's it's like jumping off and you're like, I think this parachute is packed. Right. Mm. And it's like, that's like the fate, my favorite thing for something new. So it's like you jump off and you're like, this is either going to land amazing <laughs> or this is going to fucking fail. <laughs> but if you, if, if you don't have that thing that it could fail horribly, then it's not high risk enough. 
to like be exciting. Mm. You can still get a laugh, but to make it exciting, you know, so that will give you butterflies too. Like, oh shit, I'm coming up on that joke that might go fucking terribly. You know, I'm sure you've had every possible scenario happen at this point. Yeah. Um, I would imagine like your, your goal probably in the beginning, like when you first start is to, let me just see if I can like land these first two and then you maybe get into like a little bit of a flow, but you probably also had it happen where you hit pretty good in the beginning and also wow. It's all happened. Yeah. I mean, it's all, ha <laughs> there's, there's been like you open so terribly that you're in a hole that, um, and people are like, you, this guy is not funny. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. So <laughs> everything's happened where you've start off in a hole and you, you work your way out of it, which is kind mm. of exciting. Cause you just keep working and you, and you, and you have a hole that's so big that, you know, it, you just can't get out of it and you just eat shit, <laughs> um, which is just a devastating feeling. And yeah, there's also been this thing too. I've talked to where, when you have, you start to get a fan base, you can come on stage where the crowd is so amped up that they can't keep that level of energy for your show. So it's almost like your reception oh was bonkers mm. and then it's almost like they're like whew ah man i kind of we gave you everything we had you're like don't fucking do it at the top yeah, like right. you know like like there's crowds that are like so excited mm. um but i've had it all happen where things have gone sideways uh, th uh things you you can recover from can't recover from people boo people you know threaten you people come towards the stage and like <laughs> All of it. It's all happened. I mean, it's thousands and thousands of shows at this point. Mm. Yeah. It's been, it's been a, I can't believe I've only been doing it 20 years. It feels like I've been doing it fucking 50 years. It's amazing. After watching you speak, I was like, uh, and you probably don't think this is true, but I was like, I think this guy could get up and talk about just about anything. I think you could be like almost motivational. Like if you went to like, I don't know if you've ever done this, but like went to like a high school or something like that. I think a lot of people, even if you're just talking about your story and not even necessarily throwing in jokes. Um, no, that's an interesting thought. I mean, I think somebody who has a lot of experience in stand up probably could, like, probably could mm -hmm. just give a, 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 um, just kind of a polished speech, yeah. you know, like, because you have, you have so much speaking experience. Um, the hardest thing is to, like, keep it serious, you know, right. which you, you don't have to. Obviously, you could pepper it in with some humor, but you probably could. I remember. Um, my cousin asked me to speak at her wedding, not speak. I'm sorry. Like do a reading. And I was so fucking nervous. This was like only a few years ago. I've been doing stand up at that point. There's 15, different. So, yeah, man. I'm sitting there in the church and the aisle and I'm like, I think I'm going to throw up. Like I had just done a show the night before and I'm like, and everyone's like, they're like, oh, this is easy for you. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't even telling them. I'm like, I'm so fucking nervous because I'm not going to do stand up. I'm going to read from mm. the Bible. Yeah. So I got up there and I was like, well, you can't like crack a joke, but I just, I just did something with my face where I just like looked at it and I went like that and everybody laughed and then I relaxed. <laughs> oh, nice. I, I, I had to do something. <laughs> right. I had to get a laugh and then I was like, oh, I'm fine. And then I read, oh, fucking Jesus. And then I wrapped it up. But the, um, yeah, the, the idea of like, you, you must be serious. Like if you were like, those are the parameters that actually does make me nervous. You know? Do you uh, sometimes have any concern about being taken seriously? I mean, it's called two bears, one cave, like, and you're a comedian, but at the same time, like, or do you not, or is that like the whole point of being a comedian is to fuck around your whole life? I mean, it's actually, it almost goes the other way sometimes, you know, like sometimes I'll do an interview. Oh, why are they taking me? So yeah. No, like, well, they'll be like, Hey man, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll just like ask me a question. Like, what, you know, what'd you think about the, uh, this movie that came out or, or, or like, what do you think about this? Um, there was a, there was a fight that happened down on the, whatever, sixth mm -hmm. street. And I'll just be like, yeah, you know, I'll just answer it. Like you would answer a normal question right. and you can see the person going like, are you joking? <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, you asked me a question. I'm answering it. Right. And they're like, oh, they're like waiting for the punchline. They're waiting for you to be a comedian. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, sorry. And then they go to their next question, which is also a straightforward question. 
and I answer it like you would like try to answer it thoughtfully. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, when's the, uh, when do the jokes start? You know? <laughs> and I'm like, well, at this point they're never going to start. Cause I hate you. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was just like, you see a lot of radio guys get nervous radio, mm -hmm. especially like the traditional radio guys, because they're, they have this thing of like, something funny needs to happen. It's been 15 seconds. Yeah. Podcasters, we've been doing, you know, I've been podcasting over a decade. We realized that you can have a long form conversation and there could be hilarious things, but they don't need to happen every 30 seconds. They can just happen when they happen, you know? Mm. And I think that most, most comics probably appreciate that because you kind of, I don't know, you get in the practice of like, hey, I like to have real dialogue. Like I'd like to have, a real conversation about any number of things. And yeah, well, jokes will just naturally happen, but they don't have to happen on the mark. You know, is all this stuff just a byproduct of, uh, just you just being interested in being a comedian. Like this is a crazy studio. Like we walked into this crazy studio. I think you're building something at your house or something, right? A studio or something like that. I heard. Well, I'm or... done with, no, I, I used to do the house stuff, and okay. then I was I was like, oh, I hate having people at my house. Yeah, so especially you have kids and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so then I we we started like the studio thing a while back. We did that in L.A. first, and then when we moved here. It was like we were, we realized we we're making a commitment, a commitment to Austin. Yeah, to this as a business, we realized we had multiple podcasts that were all has like some type of fan base. So yeah, it just became, I mean, I'm so glad we started when we started and that we were able to build something where like there's a fan base that really enjoys what we put out. So we just committed to it. Do you and, have any idea like what you're trying to do? What I'm trying to do? Or like an end goal of any sort? <clears throat> no, I don't just think so. Going. I think it's just going. I mean, I remember years ago talking to somebody about uh, stand up, and they're like, how do you like they were like how do you get to arenas they're like as a comedian mm. and i go well, you you don't plan for it yeah it just happens you can't be like i want to do arenas like you have to just have a fan base that grows to be that. good enough well yeah or or just like the the the, the demand for you has to either exist or not mm. and, and it's not about writing the right joke or doing stand up. It's like, that's either going to happen. And you maybe have to not care about it. I think, you don't, I think, yeah. I mean, the first time I got an offer for one of those, I was just like, what? This sounds crazy. But you know, either that fan base is there or it's not, I don't think you can put, you can't be like, that's what I did this for, mm. you know? And, and same thing with podcasts. I mean, people get really married to like where they're at on the, the rankings of like, right. These are the biggest podcasts. Looking like, at numbers, yeah. Yeah, and I don't look at those. I don't look at the charts. Um, I rarely find out what downloads are. I just like, we just keep doing them. Somebody tells you something, you're like, yeah. cool. I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, I, we just keep doing them and we put them out and and we're just like, we're thrilled that people enjoy them and we, we try not to start new ones unless there's like a, a really clear idea mm. for it. We think it's going to be like, we started one with Danny Brown who's a, a rapper and like super funny cool. dude, but it was a natural thing. It was totally organic of him, like him being a funny guest. And I'm being like, dude, you're, you could definitely do this. And then him, him saying, well, like, I'll do it if you guys do it. And then that's how it, that's how it happened. It mm. wasn't like a meticulous plan of like, here's what we're going to do. You know, does this situation and setup? sorry to ask you so many questions on your own show, but does this situation and setup? uh, does this help provide you with a little bit more more family time? Uh, if I didn't tour, this would be fantastic because I could come here, do work, make a living, and and you know that will be the case. For instance, when this tour ends that I'm on right now, um, for me domestically it slows down at, as the year kind of like so like, in, like end of November, mm -hmm. and then I should be able to spend time at home, but still be like a productive person by doing podcasts. I have some international stuff coming up after that, but I don't, I'm not going to do a, a big tour again um, until at least a year or so later. So I'll take, I'll take time off, which having this will provide me the ability to like, like I said, be productive mm. and, and work, but not be on the road. So cool. Yeah. Um, I think we hit it all. We did. Um, Nadav. 
Yeah, Is he you, alive? You yeah, got, did you want to weigh in on um, interest rates or anything that you've been thinking about lately? Uh, yes, you know, Tom, I think you made a great investment in the studio. Uh, I think it's all really paying off, and I can't wait for you to come off tour and spend more time with us. That's a great <laughs> message, and he did a great job there. He did a great job. Hopefully we can get um, any the bald guy there. Mm-hmm. To start picking up some weights too. He's got like, he's really naturally strong. Mm. He doesn't lift weights. Yeah, we got to get him doing it, right? Yeah, got to get so. him picking up some heavy ass shit. I was yeah. actually gonna ask uh, after the show what you thought I should do because I've never been able to gain weight. I actually tried lifting weights when I was a kid, and I just I never gained weight no matter how I eat. Like I I actually calculated it this year. I've eaten 176 pizzas, and that's like just normal. 176 pizzas. 170, yeah, yeah, I calculated it. I, also, I when they do it. when they do like burger runs. He'll get five, eat all. How five. bad do people hate him for saying like he can't gain weight? Right, a lot. Uh, I, I think I think actually Tom might punch me up to this. Yeah, I saw his face when I said that. I don't think he liked that. Yeah, not bad. We could cut that out if you want. No, you don't yeah, you know, that. gaining weight is uh, it's it can be a it can be a really difficult thing. There was a lifter years ago named uh, J M Blakely who was a pow- uh, yeah yeah power lifter. Uh, huge, huge guy. And he treated his uh, bulking like he treated his training. So he would eat dinner. And then after dinner, he'd have a full pizza. And he when it, he would eat a couple bites of the pizza. And he was like, oh, fuck, man, this is disgusting. You know, this is like I'm, I'm eating, you know, way too much food. And he's like trying to gag it down and stuff. <coughs> and so he would pace back and forth. And he'd be like, this is what you need to do. Like you need to get bigger. So he would, he just took it very seriously. So I've found that with people that are trying to get bigger, uh, they got to take their kind of bulking as serious as you would take anything else. On the other side of it is you want to make sure that you're not consuming foods that might be irritating your stomach that don't allow you to eat later. Oh, do you want to tell them part two to your special so equation? Pizza. Uh, nope. <laughs> loud, loud and clear. I will take your advice. <laughs> pizza I'll, makes you I'll bloody. tell you some cool any trivia. <laughs> Pizza makes you bloaty and farty, and then makes you har- makes it hard for you to get to your next uh, your next meal. What do you have? Some sort of ma- major blowout? No, you want to hear? You want to? Does he have a poop story? Oh yeah. Oh good. He shits once every two weeks. Really? So where is it all going? This is amazing. I think it's in his dick. I don't know where it is. He shits once every two weeks. Wow. He is hates- that real? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. He hates to shit. Mama, mama. Wow. That is very irregular, but maybe, maybe, maybe it's regular for him. Oh, it is regular for him. Is it like a monster? Is it like the size of this table? Uh, w- once I go, yeah, yeah. But, but it's also like, I think it, I, I feel like it, wherever it backs up into, it's almost like there's a certain amount of it that comes out at a time. We don't need to talk about this. Why are we talking about this shit? This maybe some reverse peristalsis <laughs> going on coming out the mouth. <laughs> I, I, uh, he always says that it's like a punishment for like white America. It's, it's just this whole thing. It turns racial. It gets really racial with him. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, I oftentimes get hit by the second wave. You have second waves sometimes. Oh, like you yeah. take a shit yeah. and your whole body's in agreement that it yeah. like, it's over. Yeah. It's done with. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh my God, I got to go again. Can I tell you? Cause I actually thought about you the other day I'm while taking I was, a shit. while I was shitting. It's that. I'd had like this, like I told you, I was on the road. I, I'm sending you the message. I was like, man, killed it all week. We worked out twice a day for five of the six days. <laughs> all the eating was great. And I go out for lunch and I was like, I'm a, I have a salad. And then I go, I'm going to have a burger, bro. But I hadn't had one in a minute. Mm. I ate that burger. I got back to the hotel. I was in like, I was like, oh my God. Like it fucking wrecked me. <laughs> It wrecked me. It was like, almost like the message was like, yeah, dude, this isn't for you. Like, Yeah, these foods don't like you anymore. Yeah, this high fat or high sugar stuff immediately. Right. It's the attraction. And then you go like, oh my God, what a disaster. It was a disaster. You're like, that was a huge mistake. Kind of felt like it, yeah. This morning, uh, so I had my morning coffee and that always pushes everything out. Yeah. Clears you right out. I go to use the bathroom and I'm at the hotel, but I was using the, uh, like the lobby bathroom. Uh-huh. I don't like to blow up my own hotel room, you know? Yeah, yeah. So 
But I made a mistake and I, I went into the stall and uh, like apparently the gun was still hot, you know, because the guy just took a shit. It was clear the guy just took a shit in there because I went into the bigger one, the handicap one, yeah. <laughs> which I always poop in, which Fuck I, probably, yeah. I, probably, I probably shouldn't. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I could tell that he just shit in there because like the ripples in the water were still going. <laughs> And then I was like, ah, fuck it. Who cares? And then I was thinking like my dick, my dick touched the toilet, you know? Wow. And I was thinking like, you got a nice piece on you. Well, I was thinking like if my dick, like, would I be against like touching my dick to that other guy's dick that was just in here uh -huh. versus touching the toilet? And I was thinking of like, what's worse? Cause like a lot of other dicks have probably hit that same Bunch spot. Bunch of dicks have. Yeah. So it's like, am I better just tapping that one going tip to tip or. Yeah, that's true. I always feel like whenever my dick touches the porcelain, I'm like, I'm having a good hang day, you mm -hmm. know, because sometimes I'm like, wait, there's some there days is... where it's a little beefier than it others. is. It is. Yeah. Have you ever tried a penis pump? No, they're fantastic. Really? I'll have one sent to you. They yeah. actually, they actually work. They, Wait, so you're not just sending me steaks and workout equipment? You're yeah. Send now me? we're getting into penis pumps. We our whole our whole relationship just jumped a couple other levels. Yeah. It's not going to work in terms of like making your dick a lot bigger. Uh huh. But when you get hard, you'll be harder. Wait. So, but just that it helps like, with circulation. So wait, just that moment. In other words, you you use the pump. Let's say thirty minutes before you want to get hard. Is that what you're talking about? You or, can use it kind of whenever you want. It's almost like just a like workout for your dick. Really? <laughs> I mean, dead serious. Of course you're into this. I didn't mean to get into it. It's just something I... <laughs> How often do you use your penis pump? Uh, about every two weeks or so. You get fucking that, animal. Get that, <laughs> get that blood... So you got to train everything, right? You know I'm into training the feet, yeah. training the hands, yeah. train the dick, right? You're going to send me one for real? I will. I won't send you mine. I'll Don't send, send you, me yours. I'll send you a new one. And it really works. It does really work. You'll be pleased. And you're going to want to take pictures because you'll be like, holy fuck. Really? Yeah. And then you'll be impressed. Now, after you pump and it goes back down, you, you're saying that like you're good. You either. can over pump. You got to be careful. Oh, I'll over pump. <laughs> yeah. But you don't do it right before you, you need performance. You could. You could do it right before. But you do then. it as maintenance. I just do it as maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of massage that area. Keep it going. They're really fascinating. Send one to any too. He'd like that. We like on my podcast, we like generated like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that in just a couple months. Cause we started talking about it. Penis bumps. And then people are like, this is bullshit. And you know, like all these like young guys are like, I don't need that shit, but you know, they're clicking that link. Of course they are. They're like, they can't click it fast enough. They're opening up many windows. If any of you penis pump companies would like to give it a shot at two bears, mm -hmm. we're down. Mark, let's give them a flex. Show them the guns, dude. Look at those things. Oh, my God. I think I tore something. Whoa. You know, I tore. I, I've torn a lot of stuff. You, yeah. You broke some stuff. Did you tear something, too? Uh, I tore my patellar tendon. Mm. That fucking sucked. Um, but my kneecap was just floating. Was that around. when you were dunk going to dunk? It was. And then, yeah, I broke the arm. But I've never, I can't, I've seen... Holy shit, there was one that was real clear. It was uh, Larry Wheels was spotting. Oh, yeah, yeah. For, that guy for a young back. guy. It was a young guy. He was like 24. And he was inclining like four, five, something. And you just see it go like that. Yeah. And it's gnarly. And then the the shot from the hospital where everything's like super bruised. Like oh, yeah. Deep, deep bruised. Black and blue all the way down <laughs> into your uh, into like your forearm. I've had that before. And when you're like, you've torn pecs, mm -hmm. um, do they, Hamstring. do they reattach that? Is that the way that works or how does that? I happen? didn't have to get mine reattached. I don't know. How like, come? Uh, your I body just, no, I just, I don't ever go to the doctor. That's I'm cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I get up off the bench. I'm like, that's going to take, I don't know, two months to recover from. Yeah. I'm like, that's going to take two months. That's it. Yeah. But I didn't also have like a complete rupture like that dude did. Oh, okay. Like that that one, you're you might be in an ambulance. He was at the hospital. Yeah, he went to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. You, you, he had I think surgery. You, I think you have to go to the hospital. In those and uh, I've seen. Do you have, have you seen that one on TikTok? This oh. dude is on this uh, bicep rolls up, and he's and he's doing the 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 barbell, and he's curling like this, and both go at the same Holy time. Holy shit! Both biceps go. Whoosh, like both, you see, That's like wild. two little balls. So he tore, he tore both of his biceps on and the same movement. You're like, oh my god, that's a surgery too, right? You got to, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Whew. sometimes it's aesthetics. Wait, is you this know, the sometimes one? it's just an aesthetics well, thing? I think this is arms. it. Yeah, 
I mean, it's not, and he's obviously like a workout guy. He's yeah, preacher curl is an interesting dude. thing, having your bice, your arms fixed in that position. Oh, he's going up. This sucks, you know? You're trying to do something good for yourself, and then bam, you yeah. fucking. Oh, man. Oh. 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 That's both. Oof. It's hard to figure out sometimes why sometimes why we get hurt. Yeah. Like uh I've had some injuries recently where I'm like, where in the hell did this come? I had a shoulder thing that happened like two, three months ago that kind of came out of nowhere. Um I've had my my left hip has bugged me for like a long time. And obviously the hip it's like it's more understandable because it's like, okay, it's just years and years of squatting and deadlifting. Yeah, so it's sense. like yeah. yeah, I totally get it. But my shoulder was fine for a long time. And I just woke up one day and my shoulder was totally dead. Yeah. All the way to the point where I had to move my arm to like open my car door. I had to move my left arm Bro. with my right arm to put it on the steering wheel. And there was no, I didn't like bench the day before. Or like I had no, I'm just like, shit, man. It's just. <laughs> I, I went to, uh, I was working out. This was like a couple of years ago. And I was like, you know, we, I remember we did a heavy um, dumbbell chest day. Where for me it was eighty fives in each, and I was like, it's heavy, you know. That's good. And yeah. I was, I was doing reps with it, and I remember that like the next day I was like, fuck, my left shoulder hurts so much. So logically, I go, you know, that was a lot of weight for right. me, and that's my pain. Mm. And it's like, you know, hey, let's not do that <laughs> for a couple of days, right? But then it's like the next week, and we're, I'm like, yeah, dude, it, like it still hurts, right? So we're just like not doing that again. And then it's the the week after that. And they're like, is your fucking chest, like your arm, your shoulder? I go, yeah, it still hurts. Mm -hmm. So we're doing other things. And I noticed that when I do strict press, right? So I'm just standing there doing the bar over the head. I'm like, it's not even light. It's not even heavyweight. It's lightweight. And I'm like, it's not a lot of weight, but it fucking hurts. Mm -hmm. So I finally go, I'm going to just get this checked out. I get an MRI. And I see the uh, orthopedic surgeon. He's like, oh, yeah, you have a torn oh, shit. Uh, like labrum or something. AC joint, I okay, think it was. Yeah. He's like, it's torn. And the best is I go, so what do I do? He goes, well, if you were 21, I'd be like, surgery for sure. I go, okay, well, I'm not 21. He goes, yeah, just live with it. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I mean, you know, I could give you some, uh, like a cortisol mm. shot. It'll make you feel better for a little while, but. Yeah, it's just torn. I go, so just live with the torn joint? He's like, well, yeah. Does it still hurt? So like right now, no. But there'll be weird things. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know this sounds strange. But oh, like, yeah. You it can be like a, yeah. like a sliding glass door oh. that's like heavy, you know, like a, like a weighty one mm -hmm. where I'll just go like this and I'll be like, oh, shit. Like it'll be that mm -hmm. movement that like that, that hits it. Or we could be benching and I just load a lot that day and then at the end of it i'm like oh i feel it again you know yeah. i feel it so the answer is like it doesn't hurt me daily but there are certain movements where that it just triggers that and it's then probably I've, more your bicep but especially like the injury and the surgery and the different things you had you, you broke that arm right i did break it yeah but that pain did happen before the before injury. that yeah yeah um, have you ever had any body work done? Do you kind of know what that is? Like where people like kind of work on you? Like it's not a massage. It like fucking hurts. It hurt. Yeah, I, I've had it done. Not in a while though. That kind of stuff's really I found effective. somebody uh, after we talked or we messaged about it that does that here. I haven't seen them yet, but I, yeah, I, I found somebody. That's huge. There's also locally, there's uh, <coughs> Stretch Lab. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, that's a place that just like stretches you? Yeah, just stretches yeah. you. I, I heard some good things about it from a, from a friend of mine, but when it comes to like soft tissue injuries like that, like those injuries, uh, you basically have, uh, it's not necessarily like a muscle. It's not necessarily a tendon. Sometimes it's like the, the fascia, which is the stuff that surrounds the yeah. muscle. And there's no, like, you can't like stretch that away. You yeah. can't stretch it. You can't exercise it away. You can't just do like flies and then have it go away. Yeah. There's like literally mangled tissue in there. Someone needs to go in there and kind of grind it out. Or mm -hmm. they might need to go into a different spot. They might need to go into your neck or, your, or the back of your shoulder or something like that. Different spot to alleviate. All right. I'm going to try the um, that body work person that I found. It'll See help a lot. Um, all right. We should wrap it up. Uh, anything you want to plug? First of all, 
I did get to try a slingshot, and that thing was fucking awesome. Yeah. So especially if you're into um, weightlifting or if you're trying to get into, like, push-ups, you know, you haven't done them much or you're... Dude, this thing, it's so cool to try to do those exercises with it on. As somebody who just, you know, tried it for the first time, fucking rad. Um, so I would say try a slingshot if you haven't, but anything else? Like you have a podcast that you do? Um, yeah, it's called Mark Bell's Power Project. Check that out. It's available where all other podcasts are available. Yep. And then uh, the steak shake that you're drinking, it's the first of its kind. It's got liver, kidney, heart, spleen. It also has uh, the most bioavailable proteins in it. It has beef, whey, collagen. It's got everything you need. Plus, it tastes good, right? Tastes great. Um, drank the whole thing. And Bert, we're going to try to get you to have some of that. Can he put it in his uh, Tito's and soda? <laughs> You know, I think I th just uh, on that note again, like what's reasonable for somebody to do. I recognize that you're saying like he's not reasonable. He wants to have an amazing time all the time. Uh, but then you just kind of say like, can we can we figure out ways to have amazing times without, you know, without yes. all the excess celebration? Can, you know, can instead of after this podcast, instead of going to eat and, you know, eating a bunch of junk food, could we potentially go like work out and still have a great time together? You know, stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's not easy to trade them out. I recognize that, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff I try to encourage people to do. We're going to get them on it. I promise. Um, this was a blast. Thank you for coming. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank and you so much. And hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get to see you this summer too. That'd be fun. Oh, in LA. you know what? Yeah. Before we drop out, I got one more thing to plug. What's that? Smelly's Kitchen. Uh, yeah, I uh, started I saw the a set. I started a cooking show. It's on my uh, YouTube channel, which yep. is Mark Smelly Bell, and we're really proud of it. It's something that we've been we shot like twenty episodes, and we weren't sure how we were going to do it, so uh, we worked out all the kinks and just started releasing episodes. But it's just simple, easy, effective ways of cooking because people ask me all day long how I cook, how I prep my meals, sure. how do I do all this stuff, and. Um, I found ways that are super simple and I'll give people just a really uh, short glimpse of, of what it is I'm doing. I take uh 96% ground beef. I take something called pork panko, which basically kind of gives you almost like a bread like substance, but it has no carbohydrates cause it's just pork rinds. There's a company called pork and good pork rinds. I pour that in a pan with some uh, ground beef and it's an, it's an Italian seasoned and then I'll, I'll dump in some uh, marinara sauce and then some uh, mozzarella and it turns into like these crazy, like deconstructed meatballs. Fucking phenomenal. Like there's so many little things like that you can do. I love that. And then you go to eat it and you're like, fuck. So every meal that you have, that's something that you and I did talk about. Like yeah. the meals that you have, <coughs> just because you're, you're following a nutrition protocol, you have some sort of nutritional intervention of some sort, doesn't mean that all your foods are bland and right. all your foods don't taste good anymore. So you still have good food. That's the point in Smelly's um, Kitchen. So that way, Smelly's uh, Kitchen. Uh, I know the dog would love to see you do a matzo ball soup episode, and we, maybe we can get him on <laughs> that love pretty it. soon. I love uh, it. Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call two bears, one cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave